Just sit right back and you'll hear a tale, a tale of a fateful trip that started from this tropic port aboard this tiny ship. The mate was a mighty sailing man, the skipper brave and sure. Five passengers set sail that day for a three-hour tour, a three-hour tour. The weather started getting rough, the tiny ship was tossed. If not for the courage of the fearless crew, the middle would be lost. The middle would be lost. The ship's aground on the shore of this uncharted desert isle with Gilligan, the skipper too. The millionaire and his wife, the movie star, and the rest are here on Gilligan's Island. Hello, today's training is designed to provide instructions for building managers and work requesters at the state hospitals and state supported living centers. You all will be using a system now known as CAFM9 instead of the previous system work requester. Today's training is going to focus specifically on how to log in and how to uh, navigate around in your portal. This is the very first training that you need to take. There are going to be subsequent trainings also posted on the CAFM application suite that will go over other items of interest. So the first thing you're going to do is go to the CAFM 9 website. If you don't have a shortcut on this for this on your desktop, you can get IT to come and provide you with that shortcut. And the URL that you would type into Internet Explorer is cafm.hhsc.state.tx.us. You don't need to type this index portion. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how that works right now by typing that in. So again, it's cafm.hhsc.state.tx.us. And then I'm going to hit Enter on my keyboard and see it automatically fills in that index portion. So here's the um, login screen for CAFM 9. And as a building manager or a requester, you are going to have a building-based login. What that means is you're going to log in using your building number. However, that does not mean that you have to be logged in using a building number in order to submit a request for a specific building. And I'm going to get into the details of that in just a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to log in as a building manager in Building 501 at Lubbock State Supported Living Center. So I need to start with the three-digit identifier for Lubbock State Supported Living Center, which is 687. Now normally when you have a building number, um, you would use 687 dash and then the building number. In this case, you're not going to be using the dash, so it would just be 687501. Then your password you're going to get from your local CAFM specialist. Now you can click in the field to get the cursor started there, or if you were up here entering your username, you can tab, hit tab on your keyboard, and that'll take you to that field. So I'm going to go ahead and enter what I know is the password for this user. And then you can either hit enter on your keyboard or click on the login button. And this takes you to your portal. The portal is just the place that you uh, enter the CAFM 9 software and uh, you're able to do all your work. So the first thing that you'll notice um, is that it says good morning or it'll say good afternoon depending on what time you log in. And then it'll put the information about who you are logged in as up here at the top. You're logged in as the requester for building 687501. And then it's got uh, today's date. So this home button right here on the left hand side, you use to come back to the portal or to refresh the portal. When I talk about refreshing, um, CAFM 9 is a web-based application. And when you have anything that's web-based, occasionally um, you may need to refresh the screen in order for work to show up. And in subsequent movies, I show you how that works. Um, do not use the refresh button for the browser 
which is up here in this section. Don't use the back button. Don't use any of those things for the browser because that will kick you out of the system. If you want to refresh the screen, click on the home, which I'm going to go ahead and do right now. You'll notice that the portal flickers and then comes back and that refreshes the screen. This first section right here, My Draft and Issued Requests, contains all of the requests that you're currently working on. If it's in draft status, that means you have not yet submitted it to the maintenance office at your local facility. If it's in issued status, that means that you have sent it to uh, your local maintenance shop. So anything that's in draft mode or in issued mode is going to show up here. A subsequent film will talk about submitting um, requests so that they're issued to the maintenance shop. So you can see that there's not a lot of room here on this screen. Right now I've only got one request sitting here. But if I had several and I wanted to see more information, I would click on this white box right here in the section. And that's going to open a new window. And that's going to display all the draft and issued requests that you currently have pending. For those of you that do shift work and you have multiple building managers or requesters in the same building, this is where you can go to check to see what work is pending in your building. Okay, so I'm going to, you can, to close this window, you can either cancel here or click the X. Let me scooch this over so you can see the X. The next section, the self-service section, is where you would go to submit a new request. And to submit a new request, you would click on this icon right here. I go over that in subsequent movies. The next section is last visited. This is a kind of a handy section. Let's say you were working on a request and you weren't quite finished with it yet, but it was lunchtime. So you closed the request window and you logged out of the system and you came back and logged back in. That request would show up here in your last visited section. Again, it's got the same functionality. It's only going to display a few records here, but if you wanted to see more, you would click on this white box and launch that in a new window and it would show you everything. Obviously, for the purposes of training, I only have a few items here. So I'm going to go ahead and close this window. The next section, SH slash SSLC Work Requester Knowledge Base, is designed to provide you with training, one or two page cheat sheets for things uh, that you may not remember how to do always. There is a user manual available for you on the CAFM application suite, and your um, CAFM specialist in your maintenance shop can show you how to access that. But if you wanted to know how to do something very quickly, it would show up here. Again, same functionality. There's the white box right there if there were more than just what's showing up here. And this section will expand as we move forward and learn about what your needs are uh, as a work requester or a building manager. If you were to click on the support button here on your portal or the help button here, those two items would not be helpful. We decided to go ahead and put our knowledge base and our support right here. And if you have questions that you need to submit to our office, you do that through your CAFM specialist. So if you have any questions or issues or concerns, voice those to your CAFM specialist and then he or she will submit uh, those questions to our office. The next section are requester reports, and as of the initial rollout, there's only one report here. There may be more reports as we move forward. Um, other movies will talk about those reports and how to search in those reports, and so check back on the CAFM application suite movie section to see any uh, new reports that pop up and instructions for those. And then finally, the last section down here, Company News, um, the CAFM office has a newsletter that we put out called the CAFM Chronicle, and we try to put it out on a quarterly basis. And anytime we put a new one out, it's going to show up here. It has tips and tricks for our end users and things that might be interesting uh, for you as a user of the CAFM 9 system. The other thing that gets displayed here is if the server is ever going to go down for maintenance, there will be a red triangle that shows up right here under the image area, and it will tell you a couple of weeks in advance when the server is going to be down. We generally try to take the server down after hours so that it really doesn't impact people working the core hours of 8 to 5, but occasionally it can't be avoided and we have to bring the server down in the middle of the day. And we will hopefully give you ample warning if that happens.
So this concludes the review of your portal sections and how to log in to CAFM 9. One last piece of information I would like to convey pertains to this logout button right here. Anytime you're finished working in CAFM 9, we please ask that you log out so that you don't take up a license that another user might need. So anytime you're not working, please do remember to log out.